Ladies and gentlemen, in just a few seconds, you'll be watching the New York State Labor Committee in action from the Hotel Commodore here in New York, carried over Duke. This is WABD, Channel 5, New York. The New York State Labor Committee for Political Education brings you from the Grand Ballroom of the Hotel Commodore in New York City an address by Mayor Robert F. Wagner, Democratic Liberal Candidate for United States Senator. Senator Herbert H. Lehman has spoken before this gathering. Now Senator Lehman will introduce Mayor Robert F. Wagner. Senator Lehman. vigorous and forthright man by the name of Robert F. Wagner Jr. We were sure then and we're even more sure today that he has been and is a fine, a very fine public servant. As mayor, he has intensively dealt with problems, problems affected, reflect, affecting the lives and the livelihoods of eight million men, women, and children. Being mayor of the great city of New York with its eight million inhabitants, in my judgment, is an adequate preparation for any office within the gift of the people. <laughs> Just a month ago tonight, I placed Bob Wagner's name in nomination as the Demo at the Democratic State Convention. I predicted tonight, as I predicted then, that Bob Wagner will be an outstanding senator, a fighting representative of the interests of the people of New York State and of the entire nation. Bob Wagner has pledged himself to fight for the good causes for which why I have long striven, to replace the mccarran Walter Act for comprehensive civil rights notably desegregation and the untrammeled right to vote by all people and for the FEPC. He has pledged himself to vote in a fight for public development of our water power resources, to extend our social security. He has pledged himself to fight for repeal of the evil features of the taft Hathi Act for a one dollar and 25 cents minimum wage. <laughs> and for military and economic assistance for our little sister republic, Israel. <laughs> I, am, I am greatly honored here tonight present to you the man whom I will be proud to have succeed me in the Senate. The next senator from the state of New York, Robert F. Wagner. than myself to be introduced by you, one of the really great Americans of our country. <laughs> and his charming and devoted and lovely wife, Mrs. Lincoln. My good friend, Louis 
Hollander, Jack Potofsky, Marty Lacey, Moe Shevitz, and all of the distinguished leaders of organized labor who have said such nice things about me this evening, and my good friends here in the audience. I deeply appreciate and humbly accept your wholehearted support of my candidacy. It was here in New York City that unity was achieved in the labor movement. And through that unity of purpose, direction, and effort, labor will achieve its rightful place in the stream of American life. It speaks well to the future of America that a united house of labor is supporting the candidacy of Adley Stevenson and Estes Keebaugh. I, I am proud, too, that I enjoy the support of the United Labor Movement and the support of such distinguished citizens as Senator Herbert H. Lehman. I want to talk to you tonight about my concept of the special responsibilities of a United States Senator from the state of New York. And it is, I think, appropriate that I do so in the presence of Senator Lehman. For he has proved throughout his senatorial career that a New York senator has special responsibilities. I think the senator from the state of New York has the obligation to bring to all of our people the kinds of services and facilities that we provide to those who live in this state. He must be, as Senator Lehman has been, the conscience of the Senate. The senator from this state must take leadership in fighting for full civil rights for all of our people. His program, unremittingly pursued, must be to secure for all of our people the right to vote without hindrance equal opportunity, employment, education, and housing. <laughs> New York City is the largest city in the world. It has more Italians than Rome, more Irish, Jewish people, Negroes, than another, any other city in the world. And we have learned to live together, each contributing from his own inner resources from his own culture to the wealth and the culture and spirit that is our city. But in eight million people in New York City or the 16 million people of our state, there are some who would like to practice discrimination in some form. To ensure against discrimination by those few, we have state laws. And here in the city, my administration has set up a commission to help eradicate the remaining vestiges of intolerance and bigotry. We can achieve in all parts of the country the same fruitful amalgamation of diverse backgrounds into a greater and richer America. And for that achievement, federal laws reflecting the same purposes as our state and city laws should be enacted by the Congress. I should like to see the senator from this state take active leadership in the conservation of our vast natural resources for the future, for our children and for generations to come. We must protect for all time and preserve for all of our people the beauties and wealth of our resources. We must put an end once and for all to the present giveaway programs in which our resources are plundered and overexploited by the selfish greed of special interests. Such a program is a necessity, not a just wished for luxury. If the rate of depletion of our water, mineral, and forest res resources is maintained, we who are the trustees for the generations to come will have squandered their heritage. We will leave them a poor, denuded, unproductive land 
unable to support its population. Here in New York, we have been spending over $100 million a year for the construction of new schools. And when I dedicate a new building and see the happy faces of children in fresh and clean surroundings, I like to think of children all over the United States going to clean, decent schools, getting a decent education, and being prepared for the responsibilities they must share as future citizens in a democratic nation. A senator from this state must devote himself to getting for all American children a decent school construction program. A generation ago, the American people realized that higher education was no longer a luxury reserved to the children of well-to-do families. It was and is now a necessity of our complex civilization. Today, in the world's struggle with Kremlin-led communism, we need to equip more scientists, more engineers, more research workers, so that we can maintain our industrial advantages and spread the benefits of technological progress to all our people. To make it possible for all qualified students to obtain a higher education, I have proposed a federal scholarship program to supplement grants now being made by universities, labor unions, business organizations, and foundations. I have also proposed a federal fellowship program to encourage able scholars to enter the profession of teaching, as well as to encourage teachers to take further work at universities. And there is a third facet to this problem to which I have given a good deal of thought. The exemption allowed under the present federal tax laws for dependent children attending college has long been unrealistic, far below the cost of that education. If we believe, as I do and I know as you do, that higher education is an imperative national as well as personal necessity, we must allow a realistic tax deduction for the cost of that education. <laughs> and while I am aware that tax and revenue measures must, origi must originate in the House of Representatives, senators must also act on them, and I pledge to work for a realistic education deduction in your tax return. We know of the progress we have made in this state in slum clearance, in urban redevelopment, in low-cost housing. So we know that with vision and courage, we can provide a decent home for every American family. This means that we must have a realistic program of federal housing. In fact, the program the Republicans crippled when they came to power should be revived. But this alone is not a total housing program. We must pass legislation which stimulates cooperative home ownership by middle income groups. And this can be done without cost to the federal government. This is demonstrated by the great New York City housing projects sponsored by labor unions imaginative and bold by their rational use of credit. They have cost neither the unions nor the government a single cent, but they have produced homes of which their owners are proud and in which they live in comfort and dignity. Almost 10% of the people of this state are over 65 years of age. And through creative leadership in this state and in this city, we have worked out programs in which our senior citizens can find companionship and an opportunity to participate in constructive recreational and cultural activities with people of their own age. Under federal leadership, similar programs... You have just heard the major portion of an address by Mayor Robert F. Wagner, Democratic Liberal candidate for United States Senator. 
Mr. Wagner has been speaking at a dinner held in his honor at the Commodore Hotel in New York. This has been a paid political broadcast. Ricky Ticky Playhouse brings back the 20s with Watch it next on